<laughs> Hello and welcome to the Annie Altman Show, the podcast, season five. Welcome to the first episode in the Communication C series. I almost stuttered over that word. What a fun irony. Today, I am so fortunate to be here with Emma Waters. Emma is an actress. She's a comedian. She's a filmmaker. She's a TikToker. She's an existential human that I found through the Earth series on TikTok and then has all these other videos on TikTok. Please, please go check her out. All of her stuff will be linked here. Thank you so much, Emma, for being here virtually from Connecticut. Thank you so much for having me virtually from Hawaii. Woo, technology. Speaking of communication, how the fuck is this able to happen? <laughs> the ones and zeros, man. The ones and zeros. I just did a sketch on this about how I, I was like looking up, how do phones actually work? How are you, and like FaceTime. Uh, turns out, like if how we're seeing each other in real time, um, pixels are being turned into ones and zeros sent at the speed of light through the air and they're being turned back into pixels and a picture for you. What? <laughs> Same thing with a phone call. Like, I, so we have lots to talk about. It's all very confusing. I don't understand anything here. <laughs> what is reality? What? And people are like, no, no, that's spiritual woo woo. And it's like, no, no, we're talking about light beams being sent. We're talking about pixels of huge numbers of things bigger than we can conceptualize of little things smaller than we can conceptualize and we're being like yeah no that's normal no totally normal totally normal i think it's a i mean it's i think it is far more tolerable <laughs> when you pretend it's normal um because when you realize the vast um confusion of it all it's like oh oh my gosh this is too much for me um i can't i can't, this is this pill got exponentially bigger and i i cannot swallow this anymore um Oof, let the existentialism begin here we go yes it's playing that pretend just enough of like no 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 we live forever like death isn't a thing that happens and we know where we go after and how we got here ha ha to keep doing stuff but we're like we're just gonna we're just gonna not we're just gonna not pay attention to that stuff right now maybe we will one day when we're faced with it but probably still not then either <laughs> well, there is a limit to how much we can pay attention and also in my experience if I don't pay attention to it then it's when it starts to reference your videos and the beautiful loops check out the videos people it becomes a loop. It starts coming up as this repetitive loop that's like, pay attention to me. Hey, bitch, I love you. Pay attention to me. Pay attention to me. Hey, hello. What's up? Ah. Yeah, it's nonstop. Like, can you just, can, can the neurons in my brain stop firing for one second? Like, the crisscross is just astronomical. It needs to just, shh. It's why I like, um, like, working out. I find it's the only, or like paying, like getting lost in work or lost in an activity. It's like very meditative because it's like, you're actually just focusing on one thing for the, like for a brief moment of your life, instead of thinking about everything all at once. Um, which happens to me, like when I'm, when I'm writing, even though it's writing about existential stuff, it's, I'm still focusing on just one aspect of it. Um, which is kind of like ironic. Yeah, that's so ironic and so <laughs> meta that you're in flow by writing about existential because you're so focused on. Yeah, I've a friend recently on the phone said something to me where they were like, "Come, like, come on, Annie, like you know the thing. Before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water." Oh. like about it's like the thing what are you currently presently doing in that game it's like okay where's your body what's going on what's wow. the which then to go back to the meta it can still involve words or giving a a home and an outlet and a place for those words in that loop that can take you out of it like it needs it needs to go somewhere is yeah what I have learned for me that's super interesting. Like I recently wrote, I, I was thinking of doing a sketch on this 
not really a sketch, but more of just like a, I don't know, like j just a, uh, a normal video about like why I love going for walks or like the moment, the moment on my walk that I love the most is when I'm like, when my mind catches up, when my body catches up to my mind. Cause I find my mind is always like, 10 steps ahead and I'm, I'm always looking down and I'm looking at the street or the road to see where I should take my next step. Like, do I want to slip on ice or should I avoid that? Or, you know, there's a pothole right there. Let me go over that. Or, um, somebody's coming up ahead with their dog. And because of like coronavirus, you got to like go six feet away from them. And, and like my, my, my favorite moment is when I'm like, not just looking down and so, so ahead of myself when I'm just actually like looking around and like looking at like just a tree and being like, oh, that's a beautiful tree. Like, I don't think I've ever seen that tree before and it's been there my whole life. Um, sometimes I'll like get home from a walk and I'm like, how did I already, how am I already home? How did I get here? <laughs> like, what was I doing on this walk that I'm already, like I was making all of these subconscious decisions <laughs> like take a left or take a right like to go back home and like I, I was I wasn't present and so my favorite favorite moment um during the walk which doesn't always happen is when I'm fully present and like I I'm conscious like I'm actively making decisions instead of like passively yeah you're but in it all, but it's all about words too because like all the words in your mind are like you're communicating with yourself, but 10 steps ahead in order to protect yourself really. And like, you know, you're looking out for yourself. You're like making sure you're crossing the road at the right time. So you don't get hit by a car. Um, but it's like the, the communication that takes over inside of your head completely takes you out of your body. And it's, it's like, how do we, how do we get here? Like, how do we get back to like, just <laughs> kind of serenity? It's a hard thing to do. <laughs> Yes, it is a goofy, it's a really goofy game. And you brought up so many points that I want to touch on because there's one of the, that your monkey mind, your ego mind, your whatever looking out to protect you and how much it can get demonized, how much I've demonized it for myself of like, no, I need to detach from my ego, man. Like, what if your ego is looking out for you not touching a hot stove, for example? Mm. There's also what you said too about the, mind body connection which for believers in soul or the soul label or the emotional spirit sort of label i have i feel like there's overlap there between mind body communication and also soul ego communication and to get into this see a little bit about communicating and how the clusterfuck as i see it of communicating is that my mind body communication are currently communicating and your mind-body communication are currently communicating. And then as you gave us in earlier for information, there's the light pixels and the zeros and ones and the communication through these technological devices that are currently happening, that that's communicating. And then our perceptions with ourselves are also in the back communicating about how it's happening as it's happening. I'm like, well, is this podcast interesting for someone? Is this going to be helpful? Wait, did I ask this question correctly? Oh, wait, did I? It's like all of it at the same time and so where's that moment of mind body and being in the now and the it's such a goofy thing because you can be saying all these words and be not present and hearing all of these words and you could also be saying all these words and hearing them and be totally present and nobody knows but you oh uh, yeah you're right you really never like yeah because i feel like i've gotten through conversations and you're not really listening. You're, you're so focused on something else, but like you get, you somehow get through the conversation and you're like, how, do, how did I do that? It's, it's odd like, that that, home. yeah, it, it's like autopilot. It's like, how, how is this happening? <laughs> That's interesting. I have never thought of that. What's the difference for you in the feeling of it? However, you can give word label descriptions of when you're in the conversation versus when you're on autopilot through the like, yeah, I'm good. How are you? Well, the different, like, I think a, a real difference would be like, if I'm interested in the conversation that's happening, like this, of, of course, the small talk, the small talk is never really interesting. Um, 
Like I'm, I'm a person who like loves, you know, all things existential. And like, I want to talk about the earth and I want to talk about life. And I want to talk about like your struggles and your heartbreaks. And like, I want to go deep with you and like the, Hey, how are the kids? Like that? I don't like, it's like, of course I care about how your kids are doing, like, but it's not, it's just, sometimes it feels like what you have to do, what's socially acceptable to do. Um, instead of like what you actually like, you know, you, you, you don't want to come across as rude. Um, so you, 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 you say the socially acceptable things, how are the kids, you know, how's, how's life, how's the job. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing to do. Like, I don't think it's bad to like hold yourself to those societal standards because like <laughs> sometimes you are truly interested in how people, people are doing. I think when it becomes a little draining is when it's happening all the time and when that's as far as it goes and you're not really diving into anything like passionate or um, thought provoking. Um, I think a difference, another difference is like the way my body feels in a conversation, like as weird as that sounds, when you're fully engaged and you're present, it, there's almost like this warmth and you can feel like energy, like pulsing through your body. And you, you, at the same time as that, that, that that's happening, there's all there, there is this serenity that comes because you're, you're present and you're focusing on again, one thing. And then, and there's this peace um, because you can't help, but not think about this conversation that you're engaging with and that you like are really like talking about. Whereas like when you're in a conversation that you don't really want to be in, um, whether that's with a, like a stranger who's might be bothering you on the street or, you know, a difficult conversation that you just don't want to have at the moment with somebody you love, there's this, um, it almost feels like you're not in your body. It's like you're outside of your body somewhere. Um, there, there's like this hollowness. Totally. Totally. Yeah, that word is so good for it. And you also brought up engaging, which is a great word for this and a lot of great words here. Great, great, great. Words, words, words. Um, <laughs> the feeling and that physical sensation, it's so physical and tangible. I feel like often with existentialism, it can be so easy to be like, oh, it's so heady and out there and you're getting caught in your head. It's also, this is a feeling. This is existential dread is a very physical sensation, people who, if you felt it, you're, you know, you have that's so much of panic attack symptoms and panic generally is feeling so disconnected from your body and so in the oh my gosh this body's gonna die one day this body's gonna die one day this body's gonna die one day versus and I'm glad too you brought up the paradox of it being both a warmth when you're in the engagement and also a serenity mm -hmm. which to go more existential to words and serenity and surrender to the flow of conversation rather than to project a, a big piece of my podcasting learning journey, controlling the conversation of where it needs to go. And well, I need to make sure I give the person the platform to say this thing. And well, I got to ask them about this question. And oh, how do I highlight this thing that I know this person has a lot of experience and passion about? And rather than saying, okay, well, what are they saying right now? And that surrendering in a, okay, well, the things will be talked about. And also, wow, I'm like warm and excited. And we're, oh my gosh, like, we're, we're talking about consciousness and communication and existentialism. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's like so silly and serious at the same time too. That paradox with it all gets to me of, because as soon as we're putting words to something, right? And the communicating of it, because that feeling, that physical feeling is a communication. Your body's sending you a message. And it's really different from words and then your mind using words to, and someone hearing these words and having, however they define all of these words and whatever associations and attachments they have with these words that are coming out in, again, this clusterfuck of communicating. Right. And then you also like, there's, <laughs> it's so you, funny. Even, you might be present and, you know, it, it's funny that like, I, I find that like, in conversations too, I can, um, 
there's a very steady, steady pattern of like um, fluctuation. Like I'm present and then I'm thinking about something and then I'm like, okay, go back to it. You get back to get back to that fun spot. Like, why are you <laughs> go back there, Emma? Like, why are you, you just said something, you said a sentence and you were present and you're like, oh my God, two seconds later, you're like, oh my God, did I say the right thing? Like, how are people going to pe perceive that? Did like, did I stutter? Did, did any of that make sense? I think it was making sense while I was saying it, but now I have no idea. And then I just, oh, I just missed your, qu what did you say? Pause, please, if I may, that would be such a great TikTok umentary short there to do of <laughs> like missing the thing while also reflecting on the thing existentialism and then yeah. also backtrack moment to the thing about walking. I feel like you could totally make a cool TikTok documentary with that too, where it's like you, two versions of you and like at the end of the loop, you, oh, this is so exciting. I fucking love <laughs> loops, Emma and people who love loops too. Okay, so at the end of it, you would meet up with you, like at the very end, you meet up with you and your body and then the circle around, you leave your body again and your mind and body detach, quote unquote, mm -hmm. and then you come back and you keep looping around. And why I just got all excited about this being a loop is that I would like to share a thing with you and people listening that helps me to remember. So that's why I'm sharing it, which is that, because it's really easy for, for, at least for me, for the ego game of it to be like, yes, I am so present. Fuck yeah, go me, I am here. Which is like, okay, human, good one, like, haha. And I was gifted the learning of the reminder. I was gifted the learning of the reminder, she communicates, that that moment on the other side of the circle where you're at the farthest possible point from being so present and you realize, whoa, I'm not here at all. Like you're like, whoa, wait, hold on. Present is all the way over there on the other side of the circle is also a really present, maybe as present quote unquote moment because yeah. boom, a loving slap of awareness communication, a love. Yeah a hug whatever you want it to to be it's a funny like super love slappy as much as like a love yell across from the room like right. hey we're here Come, let's reel you in it's funny you bring that up because like two i find myself again like you said you're like hell yeah, I'm fully present, like, go me, good for you. And the problem with that is that, like, when you're not present, there's almost this shame. Um, there is totally, for me, I, from in my humaning. Yeah. You're not, and, you're, and, you're not listening enough. You interrupted her. Oh, my God, fuck you. <laughs> right, and it's like, or, or uh, I'll, <laughs> this has been happening more and more <laughs> recently. Like, I feel like I became ve this very present human being over the course of the year and like just through my ex personal experiences and um, I wasn't working as much. And now I've been thrust into the, and I was very present and I was always like, I love the universe and I, I love poetry and I love just experiencing <laughs> oh, life and existence and oh I, I have I'm filled with so much gratitude and love and then now I'm thrust into this world of like work 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 your butt off so that one day it feels like you may get the privilege of being present again I feel there's I've been judging myself a little bit of how could I have been so present and how could I have lost that and how could I have let these things take over my mind and my attention so much where they're affecting me negatively. Like I thought I was, I thought I was past this. And you know, you, you, you realize like when, as you grow up, like you're not past anything. I don't think like, I think, I think you can learn things, but I think, you know, if something comes, comes back around and it's similar, but it's in a different color, you're not going to recognize it right away. Or you might not, you might, but if you don't, that's okay. Like, it's not your job to see all of these things that are above you while you're on the ground. It's just your job to be on the ground right now. Maybe your future self, maybe it's their job to kind of look above and be above ground and look down and, and then draw like, like lessons from those past grounded experiences. 
but just like calm, calm down. I realized this like I think yesterday like I I don't I don't know if I'm ever learning anything right now. And not anything grand at least. Like about specifically about myself. Um like obviously you can like learn about ones and zeros and you can learn that right now. That's something you can look up on Google. But like w in regards to like who I am, and like my value system and my beliefs and why I was acting a certain way, I really find that I've, I'm only learning things about my past self. And I, I think I know my present self, but it's so hard to know. It, I think it's, it's, I think we, I think we like to say we know who we are uh, because that's very comforting and it's very uncomfortable to admit that you, you know, you're really learning by trial and error. Like you are, you're just taking one day at a time and like doing as best as you can. Um, but I think in, in admitting that, you know, I don't know, maybe there's a lot about my present self that I'm not currently aware of. I think that takes pressure off of me. Um, in like my questioning of why did I just do that? Cause it's not my, it's not my job to know that right now. <laughs> and I won't. And I, I think it's, yeah, it just takes that pressure off of me needing an answer to that question. It's like, I, listen, maybe I'll figure that out in two years, <laughs> but right now I'm just going to like, that, okay, that's a moment that has passed and it's gone now and we shall move on. Oh, like so many good. Yeah. There's so many good things in there too. I got excited to like, I want to start on this thing and this thing and that of like all of the loops that come up in my experience. Again, the only experience I can speak to here of wanting to, to know all of the things being like, no, but, but I must, I'm going to quote, win the game of life and not die for that. If we're making it, that's to go back to the like, oh, what are you winning? What do you not know? if I know all the things or somehow that's going to give me like some advantage of, right. of knowing and controlling and, and being able to, yeah, like predict and, and be something that I wouldn't want to be. Right. I'm, I'm a human. I'm not, that's like part of the definition of this human thing is not knowing all of the things and mm -hmm. I'm glad too that you brought that up as that being gentle with yourself to say, hey, you don't have to know this right now and that's okay. And maybe that's actually preferable. Maybe there is some quote, if, you, if it's gonna help you, maybe believe there's a reason that you don't know this and that because you don't. And if you were supposed to know it, you would. Mm -hmm. And that is what would, be, what would be happening here. The other thing my head went to when you were talking is Heisenberg uncertainty principle and the something for my like science spirituality nerddom that this like the same levels of things where when you watch when a, a particle is observed it changes the behavior of it changes from being watched and so that thing that you're talking about of you can't ever fully know because you're existing in the present moment so the goofy game of this is like as soon as you're like okay well i pinned myself down like that's who i am it's like well then you're not present because you're on the other side of the circle watching yourself like you existing as you rather than you actually existing, mm -hmm. which is why words are so funny to be like, how do we give word labels to all these things that as soon as we give a word label to we're we're detaching in some way, we're having some sort of separation. And this feels like a great time to bring up and to touch on all of your videos and especially the earth ones and especially the things of being like, what the fuck? is being on earth as a human what is happening here and like why how are we all acting like this is how are we not talking about this more right i i think i was trying to pinpoint and psychoanalyze my past self of course uh to figure out why i am the way i am today my present self <laughs> And in doing so, I think I, and you know, to be fair, I come to conclusions and I'm like, oh, that's totally why I, I, I was that way or I acted that way. <laughs> like I still, I don't really know, but I think that that's the like, 
what I've accepted. I, I think that's the acceptable answer that I'd like come up for myself of like, that's exactly why I did that. And it makes sense to me. Um, <laughs> instead of being like, oh, I don't know who was that. I think my existential questions, uh, <laughs> I was telling this to my mom, first happened uh, when I was very young. And I'm not sure who your audience is and who could be possibly listening to this podcast. So I will, I will be hiding this little message <laughs> as best I can. Um, I found out something as a child. I was in elementary school and I was excited for something. And I went to school and I said what I was excited about. And a kid looked at me and said, that's not real. That thing that you believe in, that's not real. How, like, your, your parents didn't tell you yet? And this relates to, you know, maybe fictional characters. And, you know, I, I don't want to give away the secrets. They're not my secrets to tell, right? But when I found this out, I had, I have two older siblings. They're six and eight years older than me. And so they knew the secret, the, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. When I found out that this thing that I believed in wasn't real, I was like, wait, whole, hang on a minute. So you mean to tell me I, I believed in this thing my whole life and it's you and you were lying to me? How could you lie to me? How could you tell me these things? And how could everybody be in on it except me? I felt lied to and I felt betrayed. And I felt like, well, you know, if, if this thing isn't real, then that thing's not real. And then that thing's not real. And then what's real? And then I think I, I don't know if that questioning stopped, but I can't really recollect any, any moments in my life between then and the next moment of like real existential um, questioning, which happened to me in high school. I went from a Catholic middle school, pre-K to eight, I was in a Catholic school ninth grade, I went to a public high school and I met for the first time in my life, two people who were atheists and they looked at me and they said, I don't believe in God. And I said, Whoa, uh, excuse me. You... Hang on a minute. The same thing's happening now again to me. I have been told since I was, since I could be told, that this thing is right, this is what we believe, and these are the implications of it. God is real, you're a good person, you go to heaven. And now you're telling me that you don't believe in the thing that I believe in. And you're almost looking at me like, oh my God, how could she believe in that? Almost like the thing that like with when I was a kid. And that really, that was like the biggest turning point for me in this really started a lot of questioning in my mind because I was like, first of all, it made me question every religious like system we have. I, I thought, you know, okay, I believe in this, you believe in that, and that person over there, they believe in something different than both of us. We can't all be right. So some of us are wrong or all of us are wrong. And that makes me feel terrible. <laughs> And I, I couldn't, I was, I felt so angry and I, again, I felt lied to and I felt betrayed and I felt scared because for my entire existence, I had answers for things, you know, I had an answer to why we're here and what we're supposed to do here and where we go after those were those questions. I had answers to them. And now I was thrust into this teenage body and brain where so much is happening. And now I don't know anything anymore. And I, I became, the more I talked with these, with specifically one, one of, one of the atheists, um, I, I just questioned her all the time. She's my best friend. And I said, like, why don't you think this? And what do you think? And she made me start feeling more comfortable in like an atheist mindset. And I think then I was like a self-proclaimed atheist. I was like, and I, I was a really, really angry atheist. I was so resentful and because I was hurt. 
And I was like, everybody who believes in any, in God or heaven, they're so stupid because I felt that way. I felt like, how could you believe in a fairy tale? You know, this isn't life. Uh, there's evil and you can't explain it. I think as I've grown and become maybe, I, I don't know more if it's more spiritual, but more open to, maybe it's just less angry. Um, I find myself being far more open to, I don't know. For a long time, I knew this thing and I thought it was true. I was Catholic, God was real, I was going to heaven. And then I didn't believe in that. And then I believed in God is not real, there is no heaven and we all die and this is there's no purpose. And now I'm kind of at a place where it's like, well, to be honest, I don't think it's up for me to say if God is real or God is not, or to proclaim I know things. I don't know anything. Like, and it's, and it's, I've really come to the like decision that it's not my job to know. It's not my business to know the answers to those questions, but I can, I can choose my own answers in the way that I know how I can decide that, you know, this isn't all for nothing because I'm going to make something out of it. And I think, all of these questions for so long were just trapped inside of my head and I felt lonely in them. And so I, you know, I did this video on dying and death and you're telling, wait, you're telling me the humans, they're, they all die. All of them die. What the, what is, what is the point of that? Are you kidding me? And, it, and it's mainly, I think, because I have lost um, people this year um, close to me and people who I'm close to have lost people that they're very close to that I, I'm kind of and 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 with the pandemic like there's so much death this year it seems um, at the forefront of all our lives and you turn on the news and you know there's always been death before and people dying in like underdeveloped countries and even 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 in developed countries like we have um, people who are dying here of just everything everything you could imagine homelessness everything I felt like I just had to get it out of my head as like a therapeutic exercise and, and, and people responded to it really well. And they, they said, oh my gosh, you are saying the things that I have always felt. You are putting words and visuals to my thoughts and I feel this way too. And that was so, that was so special to me because for like, a long time I felt alone and I felt like the universe was playing a joke on me like haha you believe in this guess what it's that and now it's kind of like haha you believe in that okay believe what you want <laughs> and you know deal with it I just that was a very long spiel I loved it I was I was engaged and enchanted and there's so many I loved especially I made a mental note of what you said you're like maybe we're all wrong like that accepting that as a possibility too and I so resonate with that feeling duped and the cosmic joke of the universe quote from a friend and lots of people of haha like good one you know like that that was a cool timing of a beep that was a really cool timing of a beep good oh, oh shout out Michael Murphy uh -huh. cosmic joke wow weird very cool where we don't know and we, to go meta on it too, we know that we don't know. <laughs> and the more that we go along, we know that there is more to know. So we, we know there's continually more to know and we know we don't know all of it. And we know we have impulses to know all of it. And like, ha, ah, good, good one. And, and that we'll never know all of it. Yeah. And I, so on the Maslow's hierarchy of need things, like this sort of stuff is at the top. Philosophizing is a privilege, like having these kinds of conversations. And also something that I philosophize on with the privilege of it is how much it may be more of a circle in terms of how to just so people who need basic resources, who are not listening to a podcast, who are not philosophizing, who are not going through all of the existentialism, 
part of that is because they don't have resources. And part of that is because there's people hoarding resources. And I'm curious. And so part of why, especially I get so inspired by people like you making art about this to encourage the conversation to quote raise awareness and these things that people are like no that doesn't do anything because we can't scientifically measure it. it's like well what if there's someone who has a lot of money who then because of that reflecting at the top quote unquote of maslow's hierarchy of needs does something about it to help with the whole pyramid and and people mm, i guess having space for for all of it because everyone, even if you do, like I've had times in my life of having way less basic needs and way more basic needs. And there's still some level of like, well, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, I don't know how I got here. I know that nobody makes it out of life alive. And I know that I'm gonna lose people I love and that everyone's gonna lose people they love. And what a, that's a dark joke, universe, whatever, higher, like good one, what? <laughs> like haha I thought that too when you were talking about anger with the stages of grief and that life game question mark learning experience of going through these stages going going around the circle which is again I'm loving the circle stuff so much for all the science spirituality and like well maybe reincarnation maybe time is a we don't I don't know I like to say or I like to communicate of pick what is going to get me into bed and get me out of bed. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you brought that up too of like, and for the other C themes of the humanity of your being conscious and you're making a choice of, of how you're going to compassionately communicate with your existentialism. Cause it's not going to go away. Like ignoring it doesn't. No, it hasn't in years. Uh, it's time I do something about it. <laughs> Yeah, you brought up a lot in that that answer too. There's so much in all of this. Ah, no, there it is. is. It's so. What are we doing? I think I totally agree with the the idea of philosophizing is a privilege. I think. I look at my life and I look at a lot of things that are in my life and I'm like, oh, I have that because I'm privileged. This thing is a privilege to have. Oh, people don't get to do this. I'm doing this again. I'm privileged. And I think the people who are meeting, like struggling to meet their basic needs, right? I don't think that they wouldn't Again, I, I can't speak for anybody in that situation. But in thinking about this, I wonder if those people, I'm sure they also think, what the, what the F? What the actual F? Because these people, <laughs> they probably look around and they're like, everybody has everything and I have nothing. And I'm working so hard to just get something. How? Why? Like, what is the point of any of this? And so I don't think these existential questions are, I don't think having them is a privilege. I think people, I think people just have them. What I think is a privilege is what you said is like being able to talk through them and like communicate with other people and help each other out on this like cluster fuck of life and like questioning. Um, I really like that you brought that up. That's super cool and something I have never thought about. I'm glad that you like it. And I'm, I'm glad too that you're making art to help those conversations continue happening. And also to something that to go again to ego and soul and shame and privilege is a tool and privilege has been and can be shamed a lot. And I've definitely shamed it and then have ironically experience the other end of the circle of it and it it is a perspective privilege is both a perspective and it is a very tangible physical 3d reality access what do you have the time and space for mm -hmm. yeah and the part that to me gets so probably it's like a lot of it is my own wanting to control being like well there's enough food and all the things for everyone like your video like we all know if you talk to someone one-on-one -on -one, we know there's enough food for everyone and enough water and there's enough places for people to to live and 
And so then that can become its own loop of being that stuck in, okay, well, why have we not dealt with this yet? Why have we not dealt with this yet? Why are we still not act? Why are we still not distributing basic resources equitably? How, like literally how is this not happening? And part of my inspiration with the podcast and the humanity and for my own, like you're saying of needing to get it out and share it and put it out there and work through it with people is how is talking about it part of the action of also changing it? Mm-hmm. Because not talking about it hasn't worked. Not talking about existentialism has not decreased suicide. Not talking about suicidal impulses has not decreased suicide. People not wanting to talk about suicide. And I get super fiery about that one too of most people much like have we're aware that we die. Like it's such the basic core of all this existentialism is we know that this is temporary in terms of these suits not being here. And then that can go into all these different places of, well, maybe I can control when it ends. Well, how is it going to end? Well, what's, why am I here then if it's going to end? Like in your video of like, okay, well then what? Like why, 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 why? Because of And the more, it's so cliche and trite in some ways. And also it is because it feels so real and so warm fuzzies of that, again, warmth and serenity of, oh yeah, I'm not alone in that. All, mm-hmm. all alone and all one. And we are all aware on some level that we're aware beings that have a expiration date. Mm-hmm. It's so annoying. <laughs> It, it genuinely annoys me. It's like, are you kidding me? Like, who? I didn't sign up for this. And for what? And for what? <laughs> which, yeah, which I was stuck in that, that like, mentality for, for a long time. Like, instead of choosing, like, a more positive route, it was like, nothing matters. And so I don't care. And so I'm just going to be this depressed person and I'm going to let, I, 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 don't, I don't even know, like I'm just, I just don't even care to participate anymore because it's like, why participate if I can't change the outcome? And obviously that's a very, um, I don't want to say negative, maybe like a dark place to be instead of, I think that's a darker place to be than certainly saying like, I, none of this matters, but like, I'm going to make the most of it. (laughs) It's just, you know, an optimistic or a pessimistic view in, in which, which one are you in now? And knowing that you don't have to be in the same one all the time and that you like, you will fluctuate and then that's okay. And that if you are pessimistic, like there, there's hope. And if you're optimistic, you know, just know if it gets rough, like stick it out. Like don't, don't get too, uh, like stay humble almost. That's maybe, that's how I like to look at it. Like I'm a big believer in like nothing lasts forever. And that's with a lot of people, I have a tattoo on my back that says that. And a lot of people are like, wow, that's really negative. And I, I say, well, you think it's negative because you're negative, <laughs> but I, it's very positive to me. I know that if I'm going through something really rough, it's not going to last. And I know if I'm going through something really great, enjoy it while it lasts because it won't. Um, and it's all about that like presence again, like it all goes back to being present and like, what, what are you just dis- like, I don't know if we can decide how we feel about situations I feel like sometimes I can and sometimes it's above me sometimes I can't um but when I do have the ability to choose how I feel about something you know make sure it's in line with your values and where you want to be and how you want to feel if that makes any sense at all (laughs) yeah I'm loving all of this and it is I'm glad too that you brought up and also even the word labels of negative and positive. And I was thinking about toxic positivity and that whole like, oh, good vibes only. And I'm like, no, then they're all just vibes. What are you, what are you <laughs> doing? And how, 
again, to go back to surrender, serenity, and also the feeling, the energy, the vibes, whatever you want to call them, of trust. The word trust is coming up a lot too, Mm -hmm. and acceptance of not knowing, and and also acceptance of the whole like accepting the part of you that wants to know and accepting the part of you that wants the adventure and the mystery and mm-hmm. and I, it's interesting too if you bring up your tattoo about how again like this the same words can have such a different meaning to different people mm-hmm. whereas to you you're it it is inspiring for you it's comforting to you to someone else, they're like, oh my God, you have a tattoo reminding you that you're going to die or that things are going to end or like, what the fuck? And you're like, it means something <laughs> different to me. Yeah. And, and it's, and it too, like I find, um, it's like you, you, you found out what it meant and you jumped to your own conclusions because that's how you feel. But you're projecting how you feel onto what my meaning is, which isn't true. That's not the meaning for me, which is so funny how like, it's again, it's like a miscommunication. It's like, we, (sighs) there's so much of it. Like all we do is communicate. We should be better at it by now. Don't you think? And like, we're still, we're just so bad at it. Like we, we can't communicate. And if we think we're doing a good job, it's like, no, you're not, you said the wrong thing or it was misinterpreted. And even though you meant it in a good way, screw you. And it's like, oh my God, I can't, you can't do anything right. And I feel like that, you know, with one of my TikToks that came about like with, um, and like how you brought about food, brought up food and like, how have we not, how are we <laughs> so advanced? And there are, there's still hunger. How is their hunger? Please I don't, make a video. Please I don't understand. Like, and you know, I I did this. I did this video. It wasn't. It was more about money than it was about food. But I brought up the aspect of like, you know, farming and farmers. You know, farm to make money, and and that was that was taken out of context, and that was a whole miscommunication, and and the whole video seemed to spark this like amongst a lot of people, like I, I realized that my, my view of something that I create is going to be different than how somebody views it as an audience member, because they don't know where I'm coming from. They don't know that I do mean well, they're seeing it for the first time on their for you page or, you know, on the internet somewhere. And they're like, they don't know anything about me or like the series or the characters or what we're talking about or what we're doing. And I really, it was like a, it was a good lesson to learn because it was like, okay, how do I now going forward in something that I'm writing and putting out, can this be miscommunicated? Can people draw the wrong conclusions from this? And if they can, is it worth to put out? Or should I change it? Is it more important to me to be authentic in what I want to say and let others perceive it how they want? Or is it more important for me to like look at the all the possible outcomes and judgments and perceptions of it and cater to that? I'm navigating that. Um, You know, I like to I'd of course love to say that I'm like, oh, I'm so authentic. I don't care what people say. And I'm going to make my videos how I want. Would that be authentic though? To say that you don't give any fucks about other people's caring? Uh, You know what? I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Oh, my ego loves that one. Thanks. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's funny. I go back. Yes. And it's the communication game where we have no control over how something's perceived by Mm -hmm. someone else. We only have control over how we communicate it. And then it's also the game of much like the game of mindfulness where part of it is when we're not mindful and not realizing it. There's also the part of communication that inherently is miscommunicating. I said that with a weird 
intonation there. That is miscommunications. That, because I was like changing it in my head as I was, ah, where part of it is the communicating through the miscommunications and how the miscommunications happen and then how we learn much like all of the other life cliches where we learn so much by messing up woohoo we, we make the mistake and that's actually where we learn the most of it because we fall on our faces and so then you you know I, I'm sure you can think of people listening can think of like hello moment of awareness of people here we're communicating with of that moment of how much closer and more on the same quote communication page you feel with a friend when you have that moment of, whoa, I meant this when I said this word and you mean that when you say that word. And this moment that felt like this huge rift, this huge, we were saying this thing, we were not seeing it the same way. Then you see, you know, the metaphorical like, oh, well, we're on pages next to each other and I can read your page now where you actually were using this definition of this word and I was using this one. And you're like, whoa, like I didn't... Then again, I'm back to like soul and ego and all this stuff where all the things that get triggered along that path of being like, hey, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's not personal. It's me, me, me. What do you mean when you say those words? What are we... What's going on? And I feel like that is really tied. I get very passionate in in my circles about that being tied to resource distribution and food distribution and like hello how do we get back to this thing and how do we address you know there are people addressing this how do we support them how do we connect them how do we do more there like this is a solvable problem humans right like how do we communicate to have that happen i it's unclear to me i'm really glad you're out there as someone who is going <laughs> along that art and creating path for, I, I don't know. And I, I'm glad you brought that up too, of how much of existentialism and communication is, oh yeah, I'm totally preaching advice to myself here. Being more okay, more at peace with saying, I don't know. And that that is great. Cool. I don't know. The mystery. Mm-hmm. Yay. Mostly yay. Also, <laughs> there's also an, an incredible sense of freedom that comes with, I don't know. Mm. And mm like back to like how we were talking about like your sense of self and like this, there's this circle and there's this presence and, and then like shame, if not like (laughs) we have ideas of who we are, but what happens to us when we act not accordingly to our definitions of ourselves, there's this incredible shame. There's a lot of questioning how, I I thought I was this person. How am I reacting to this? Why am I like, uh, I thought I knew myself. Apparently I, I, maybe I don't. And and then it's, I think when you allow yourself kind of like, um, you know, you don't box yourself into like, this is exactly who I am. And you allow yourself to like, kind of grow and change. You learn more about yourself in like a, a judgment free zone, because the thing is, everything you do and how you react, that is who you are. Like I, Jim Carrey is somebody who has like gotten very spiritual later in his life. And he's done like a lot of talks and I was listening to him speak about character one day. And like, you think, you know, yourself and, you know, we put on these masks of who we are and um, of course, I'm not quoting this directly, and this is I, I listened to this a while ago. So if you um, feel so inclined, please please listen to these things yourself. Um, do your own research and your homework. But basically, the gist was that like Jim Carrey doesn't exist. Like the idea of Jim Carrey doesn't exist, and and this kind of came about for him in in a way that he got so lost in a character that he was playing like for a movie or or for something, he was playing this character and he got so lost in them that he didn't know who Jim was anymore. And that was a really interesting concept to me because I was like, yeah, like how could, we think we know ourselves so fully and so deeply, but then how can you get lost? And we get lost all the time. And um, whether people want to admit that to themselves or not, you know, you don't always know and that's okay. And that's, and so that, that 
bringing that back to that like sense of freedom of that, like you don't have to constrain yourself. Like <laughs> it might feel nice, honestly. And I think it's safer when, when we label ourselves and we say, this is who I am. And because it's, you're saying that this is known and this is true and that this is always true, but that's not the case. Um, <laughs> life is more uncomfortable and more unpredictable than that. Um, and it also comes up like in, in little examples, like, oh, if I were in this situation, I would do this. <laughs> How do you know? You think, you, you, I, I always think like, it, when people pose like that situation question to me, what would you do if? I always start it with, well, I, I'd, I, I hope I would do X, Y, and Z, but I can't know for sure because I'm not in that situation. Like, like something like, what if you hit a deer on the highway? What would you do? Oh, I would pull over and I would help the deer and I would call animal control and I would, or like I would take the deer and nurse it back to health. Like you, you, well, what if you keep driving? If you have this constraint of who you are and then you do something outside of that, I think that's where the shame comes. But if you allow yourself to say, I don't know what I would do, and then you do that thing that would seem out of character if you believe that you have a character, well, then there's no shame because that's just part of who you are. That's just how you reacted. I think that's a very interesting concept. Um, very, very out there, though. Like, <laughs> kind of. It's both out there and right in here. I feel like you just brought so many circles together in a lot of... And to that that's a powerful reminder of shame coming from boxing ourselves in. And I'm really glad you brought up the freedom and the space to expand. I'm using other word labels for the same thing by giving, giving the grace to say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And it is this weird. Okay. So another sort of the other kind of dichotomy here I'm coming to is resistance and allowing and accepting and how, again, sort of with like flow and control and this whole, because it, it's such a goofy, you know, we're like, we do to go again to needing our egos and not going to shaming ourselves for having egos and being humans. That's part of how, you know, I made the podcast, you made your TikTok videos. Like, we're like, oh, well, I'm this human doing these things and man, 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 I'm going to make this, I'm going to make this thing because, because blah, blah, blah. And, and then the other part of it that's fun too is, and why I love art is it you know, that can still be coming from and yeah, get muddied and all of life coming from this very in the flow in the present, like you're talking about when you're writing and you're like making the thing and you're writing about existentials and you're so in just exactly what you're doing, then we're also like making a thing to put out there. I'm getting lost in my own circle of it. It's like how, uh, yeah, <laughs> please, please jump in. <laughs> If you had a jump, maybe you did, you were in the... I was trying to follow along, and I, I also got lost, and that's okay. <laughs> we don't know, and that's a... What a beautiful, good one on the jokes again, that not knowing is acceptable. Because yeah. then there's the space to keep growing, because if the universe is constantly expanding, then it's expanding to places that we don't know, yeah. and it needs to have places we don't know in order to expand like these both need to exist and yet the resistance i guess is this whole like well i'm not gonna go maybe maybe like a, i'm not gonna go there if i don't know it or like well i have to be you know all of this stuff does get so spiritually in the like you know well taking a step without seeing the whole staircase <laughs> i'm like i'm gonna make fun of this stuff because i don't know what to do with it <laughs> right i know i'm gonna laugh with it I think it's like a healthy way to cope, but I think it is, co I think we're coping. Um, yes, 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 yes. I think mortality is something to cope with. Uh, certainly for me, I can't speak for everybody, but certainly for me, like it's something I'm, I, I think about it every day. It's not something I, I go a day without thinking about, but it's, I'm glad for that because I really find that like, I've 
become far more grateful of a person due to that. And like, I, I can see what I have and, you know, I have everything, my basic needs are met. Like I have everything I could ever need. And like, I'm okay. And in, in, in like knowing and reminding myself of every day, like I won't get today back. I spent it poorly and I don't get those hours back make tomorrow better or just like if you're still bummed about you know losing today change like i was i was really bummed like i was really bummed a couple days ago and i was like i i really hated today like i did not enjoy myself at all today and then finally i was like listening to some music at night and i like went at like i went to my window and i just like looked up at the stars and they were like so bright that night and i was like okay I didn't enjoy a majority of my day, but I'm really enjoying this moment now. I think allowing yourself also to like shift in and out of that instead of saying, I had a bad day, that's how it is. I think, I think that's an incredibly hard thing to do though. I think it's hard to um, <laughs> shift so quickly, but I find that in, in thinking about death so much, I, I I haven't I certainly haven't mastered that by any means. But it's something that I am aware that I have done, I'll say. Like on the circle of life being a spiral where you come around the same thing in a slightly different way, you're like, "Oh, I I see you pattern, I see you habit, I see you tendency, I I see you coming here similarly and differently." Mm -hmm. And it comforts me and it I'm glad to hear about for you and for other people who've had this experience too of using existentialism as a tool and as a therapy too. And then also remembering that it's part of the tool belt. It's not the only, for, for me, again, for all of these qualifiers, for the only experience I can think of, existentialism to an extreme for me was nihilism. And then being like, something you brought up earlier of like, okay, well then nothing matters and I don't care about anything and right. going all the way into that, which sure that could be true. I don't, I don't, I don't know. And having no sense of that existentialism feels detached from reality. It feels like that toxic positivity of like, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to appreciate every moment and, and shame myself. I've done that one too. Of like, I'm going to shame myself for not being grateful or you had a bad day and you're supposed to have a hundred percent of the shots. You don't take that. Like, again, what are we, I've, this is the most, I think I've made that noise on the podcast ever. So that's an interesting <laughs> communicating. A good it's like all the words and it's like, hey, body, where are you feeling? What's going on? What's, what's happening? Hey, that's fun. Ooh, cool. Ooh, you weren't present. Ooh, you were present. Okay. Hey, there, the stars are still there. And nature being such a cliche and beautiful and classic reminder of, of it. I know. And I know, like, I know how, like, <laughs> like, I think my younger, more angry self would be like, ugh, the vomit at like... <laughs> The, the universe is so beautiful, but like, I really do feel like a very, um, when I look at the stars or the moon, I feel incredibly calm because I know like nothing matters and it's not a negative way of thinking anymore. It's very much, it's like a way of, for me, I really do feel like my problems are small. And they're not going to be forever. Like, again, nothing lasts forever. But, like, the fact that, like, I am I am this tiny – I'm not even a dot. Uh, we're not even a dot. Like, when, <laughs> when you watch those videos of, like, <laughs> the camera, like, zooming out from Earth, like, from a city like – a, like, a grocery store to Earth to the to, – to now that we're in space and we're passing by all these planets and stars and, we're, and now we're out of the galaxy and we're in something else. And it's like, I can't – I can't look up at the stars and not minimize my problems. It just doesn't happen. Like it always happens such that like, if I'm, if it's rough, if it's a rough day, I like look up and I know that's cheesy and corny, but it's like, like you said, they're always there. Even if they're not, even if it's like a cloudy night and they're not there, they're still there. And it's like, that's still that constant, which is like comforting in a way. Um, but yeah, it's totally like, I'm such a blip 
this thing that I'm putting so much like attention towards and that I'm freaking out about or that I'm so worried about, like, calm down. Like, you're okay, man. Like you're no, nobody is like, there's no, <laughs> I always think there's no immediate danger right now. <laughs> there is no fire. Somebody is not kidnapping you. We're okay. <laughs> but again, that's like self-communicating, like talking yourself off a ledge and like, knowing how to communicate with yourself effectively and efficiently, which I think you learn by doing. I certainly have learned by doing and um, have learned that it's something that helps me is just self-talk. Like, okay, let me look around me and see what is happening. And, oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> oh, okay. This is interesting because I thought the world was ending. <laughs> I love that you do your central nervous system of, is there immediate danger? No, we're good. You're okay. And self-talk. I'm so glad that you're bringing up that word label here at, in the end of, or like towards the end of this here of communicating it again for spiritual things of thoughts and feelings, creating reality and all of the, all of the things and how we talk to ourselves, how we talk to others. And it is, what we have if we have this word tool then what we can do with it is be aware of how we're using it and what what happens with it and the for other kind of current labels of things like toxic positivity the one of spiritual bypassing that can be like well nothing matters and it's it's just a blip can be that extreme of it and mm -hmm. also it can be so freeing it can be used in a way to say hey, that thing you're overthinking about, like you could have overthought and said, well, you know, I can't share this video or this thing because of blah, blah, blah. And it can be such a freeing thing to take the step, the action step to do it to say, okay, well, I'm going to die one day. And there's how many humans here and I'm how much of a size thing on a what a scale? Like, does it really matter if I release this video or not? Maybe I can prioritize actually and then this goes to that root of self-talk and your shame and your love for yourself and all of those things that can be like, well, are we allowed to talk about that? Of, mm -hmm. Am I really allowed to love myself, to care about, to prioritize myself enough to say, I, I'm interested in releasing this video. It feels good to me and I'm going to follow that good feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, like, what? I know. It, it's, I'm so glad we're talking about like the self-talk too, because like, I've realized, ha like, you, you, you said, you know, it's such an in, in, <laughs> incredible and powerful tool. And it really is, like, I find that, like, and I wouldn't have believed that uh, in high school, I wouldn't, I would have been like, oh, I feel shit, like, shut up. <laughs> but because I was, that's how I was both talking to the world and to myself. Like I was saying, like, I was, oh my God, I was so negative and I was so, there was so much self-hate going on and like so much self-deprecation and like nothing matters. So you don't matter. And like people around you don't care about you. Like they do, but like, um, you know, you're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not funny enough. And guess what? It doesn't matter anyway, because no one, like at the end of the day, you die. And to switch, like, I really think you like, the more that time passes, the more I do believe this is like, you are what you tell you, yourself you are. Like if you tell yourself you're a piece of shit and like, you don't matter, you become that version of yourself that you believe in. And that is inside of you. It's just that, that side of you that, you know, ugh, don't be that person. Don't be that version. That version is allowed to exist and it's allowed to exist briefly for maybe if like you have an off day and like you're feeling like shit, right? Don't be that person as a whole. Don't, don't just be that. And then now that like, I'm in a much more like, I, I talk to myself very positively of like, you like, you're doing the best that you can. You are doing well, you're safe. You are doing things that you love. You are loved by this person and that person and yourself. You know, I've really like seen myself become that better version of me and it's like oh that's so interesting that I, I created both of those versions just by what I was saying to myself 
and my view of the world and the way I communicated to both of those things. And I, when I see people who use like self-deprecating humor, I really don't think it's funny. And I, re I really, like, I, I want to reach out to them and be like, th like, I just want to let you know, this is a slippery slope and it's really dangerous. Just be careful what you say about yourself, even if you're joking, because oftentimes you're not. And the more you say it and the more you embed that in your, your brain and your subconscious, nothing good is going to come. Meh, I don't want to see nothing good is going to come. Again, I don't know what I'm talking about. So like, take everything with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? I know nothing. That's freeing. <laughs> But I, I, I do feel that deep down. I really do. Like I get, I, I worry for people. Um, and I, I hope it's like a, a one minute video. I hope it's not their self-talk, but sometimes it is. And sometimes those people are really struggling. And I think we deal with a lot of self-hate in today's society. Like I, why we hate ourselves, man. Like what is up with this? Why? And, you know, it goes back to be like, well, you can't be egotistical. You can't think highly of yourself or else people won't like you. And if you demean yourself to saying, oh, I'm trash, well, then people aren't threatened by your existence. And so maybe they'll like you more. And it's like, oh, my God, again, we can't win. <laughs> this is a game. It's just a game. And it, and we're social creatures and we need people. So of course we all have some amount of people pleasing. I remind my inner people pleaser because we know we need people. And so we don't want to do that social thing to push people away or to seem this. And also because it can feel uncomfortable to, I mean, I'm also hello capitalism and all of the manipulating people through and government and organized religion and so many things that use shame as a way to manipulate people and to get people to buy things, believe in things, do things, whatever things, because they are subscribing to some notion that maybe they would not otherwise mm -hmm. subscribe to. And there is also that very human tribal sort of, well, I need to be liked by people. I need to make sure that well, I can't do this thing. And, oh, it's going to be egotistical if I, if I share this thing or if I do this thing I really like. And I reflect on this one a lot with privilege too of like, well, who do you think you are to do a podcast and do these things when there's people who don't have this stuff and that was so much of when I like first started doing talk therapy of how am I even allowed to be here talking about anxiety and depression when there's people who don't have food, like what? Oh, and it's like, right. okay, I hear you. And if you're going to talk about that and not the things you're here to talk about, you're still not, what are the action steps here? How are you actually, because like you brought up in a different kind of with words of the connection where you're going to start, there, there's going to be actions that start following and leading and proceeding with the words you're saying. So if you're saying I'm a piece of shit, then you're like, okay, well, you know, a piece of shit would act in X, Y, or Z way. And so that's what's going to happen versus if I'm saying, hey, I'm a, I'm a person who likes to make this kind of art. I'm a person who cares about these things. I'm a X, Y, and Z. Then your actions can start, will most likely start going in that way. We are yeah. the stories we tell ourselves. Yep. They say. They, so they say. Whoever they are. Capital T, they. <laughs> Make that video too. I'm just like, oh, here's the videos of yours I want to watch. I know, right? Capital T, they being like, here's, here's our, oh my gosh, like a meeting of the like people who yeah. are they. Oh my gosh. That's, inc that's an incredible idea. That Please. really is good. Please. I, I love seeing people make art and make them yeah. make the they, where it's like, who, what? Are we, what? I know. <laughs> it's like, we're like at this point too in the time of it where I'm like, okay, my brain is like mush on the like, oh my gosh, how we, it's like, I can only, you can only scratch the surface so much on existential talk and these things and self-talk. And then again, we're at that thing where by watching it and observing it, then we're changing it to a degree, which is also what we're wanting to do here and all the seas and the compassion for the change. And I'm going into that voice again of, okay, well, keep playing the game. Keep, keep making the life movie. Keep doing the show, the thing. Yeah. Uh, and scene, and this word. 
completely. I'm really inspired to see existentialism being something you've played with and that you have used humor with. And I'm really glad too, that you brought up like self-deprecating humor. And I think of that one a lot with comedy too, of how to, how to navigate where you using it as a tool, where is comedy a way to explore and expand more and to have more freedom and where are you boxing yourself in and same with art too. Where are you letting yourself expand and explore? Yeah. I'm excited to see where you expand and explore with the things you make. Oh, thank you. Me too. I'm very excited. I think, you know, clearly as we've seen through this conversation, there are endless possibilities and so many places to go. I think I just have to take my own advice and allow myself the freedom, you know, which is, of course, easier said than done, which goes for a lot of what we talked about today. Like it's, it's easy for me to, say x y and z it's really hard to do x y and z sometimes but like if you chip away at x y and z and you just like kind of say hi to them in passing every every once in a while x y and z become f- you're able to then have an, a conversation with x y and z and then x y and z becomes your best friends and then you become x y and z and then it's like oh i like i like x y and z maybe Maybe if I'm X, Y, and Z, and I like X, Y, and Z, maybe I like myself. I think that's like a path towards self-love too, is like, because I think self-love is a very difficult thing um, that a lot of people struggle with, something I've certainly struggled with, so. Oh, yeah. And all, all with communication. It's like, so, you know, how are you, how are you communicating with yourself and the world and how do you want to? And do you, are you proud of the way you're communicating? And if not, how can you change the way that you're communicating? And, you know, it's not wrong to change the way that you communicate. If you deem one version not acceptable for you anymore, it's again, allowing yourself the freedom to, you know, transform and change and grow. I think that's what life is about you know, giving life a meaning now in a positive frame of mind and saying that, you know, yeah, nothing matters, but some stuff matters too. That's the best I can do. (laughs) I love it. And I'm really grateful to have it on the podcast and to get to, yeah, I'm like super on one existentially here of all of we're allowed to have preferences. We're allowed to like ourselves and love ourselves. Part of this existential game is noticing where we don't and how we practice doing it. I, I so resonate on part of why I enjoy talking about these things because it helps my future practices of it and because it helps me have more compassion for the past versions of me that talked super meanly to myself. And who was that benefiting? <laughs> and I'm glad too you brought up with I reflect too of how often the advice we give to other people is the advice we're giving to ourselves. And then also the nonviolent communication of when we say you, we're really saying I, like whenever to someone else we're judging or we're being like, you, me, 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 we're, we're, it's some part of our own thing. And this level for, this is for our next podcast, whenever you want to come on again, when it works of the accountability of being like, okay, well, this is, this is my stuff. I feel like we'll go somewhere there, maybe. That'd be super fun. <laughs> I'd love to be on again. This was a really fun conversation. I love talking about this stuff. I could genuinely talk about it for hours. Um, I, I mean, I have talked about it for hours in my own head. So it's it's nice to be chatting with somebody, actually somebody that's not me <laughs> or my walls, you know? Yeah, because we can go expand so far all together because then people give some other... Ah, we just keep growing as humans. <laughs> There's some breaking out in song here. I love that. The future musical. This has been so fun and so expanding and so all of the things. I really am grateful for your time and your communicating and your consciousness and existentialism and all of it. As am I towards you as well. Warm, fuzzy, communicating. A little dancey dance to go along with it. <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in and thanks for being you